Hello and welcome. In this video, for GagePack 13, we're going to be discussing some additional features surrounding the login experience. So right now on my screen, we have our typical GagePack login window, and there'll be two things that you'll notice that are different from our older versions. The first up is at the top of the window, it says GagePack login, and we're actually identifying the database that you're logging into. For those customers that have many databases that you have to hop back and forth between, this is very handy. Now I know exactly which database, my sample gauges 130, that I'm heading into. Additionally, you may notice that when you installed and started running with GagePack 13, there is an additional checkbox. This one says to log in using your Windows username. That really just corresponds to your Active Directory account. When you started the computer in the morning or when you unlocked it, you had to type in some credentials, credentials that your IT maybe has set up for you. So GagePack traditionally has always worked with login based on users that you've created. So I have a list of users in this database, including myself. Each one of these users has permissions and roles and rights that pertain to the GagePack database. Well, if I'm already logged into this computer as Eric, wouldn't it be nice if we could also log into GagePack using those same credentials? Well, in GagePack 13, you can. So some of you may have already even tried to check this box. What happens is we're no longer concerned with entering in a password because we're essentially telling GagePack, hey, we should just log in based on the user credentials that somebody has already supplied. Second, it's listing this is the Active Directory name of the person that's logged into the computer at this moment. So mine says Empire backslash Eric G. That is a listing of our Active Directory account and my name in this particular network. Now if I do nothing and just try and clicking on OK, GagePack is actually going to tell me, hey, we don't really know about that user yet. So I'm going to hit OK, I'll uncheck the box, and this time I'm going to log in as a typical user that I might log into to administer things, which is the supervisor account. So once GagePack opens, we want to be able to tell GagePack about this new type of user, an Active Directory account. So I'm going to go up to File at the top, I'm going to come down to Settings. When the Settings window appears, we're going to head to Global Collections, and users. So this is that same collection of users we saw a second ago in that drop down when we were trying to log in. What we need to do is tell GagePack about the new Active Directory account and that way moving forward GagePack will know about it and it'll let you in. So I'm going to click on the add box and I can go ahead and define and give this new user a name. Well, if I recall, the name that was listed when I checked the box was Empire backslash Eric G. Now when you try this out, it's a good idea to click on that checkbox at least once because then GagePack will actually tell you exactly what you need to type in here. You may have a completely different Active Directory kind of structure or naming convention. It could be a bunch of numbers. It could be your full name. In my case, I'm just going to use whatever GagePack told me, Empire backslash Eric G. Now to the traditional person, or the traditional way that we're going to set this up, normally I'd head next head over to password. I would list what sort of a password I want to use for this new account. But if you notice, we do have a new checkbox. We're essentially saying, hey, GagePack, this is actually a Windows user, Windows account. If I check this box, the password information and the change after next login, that all becomes grayed out. Because GagePack isn't actually going to store this password. This is going to be something your IT is going to administer and you as well. So it's going to save you time in the long run because, hey, I'm already logged into the computer. I don't really want to have to type another set of passwords. This is how we do it. After that, you assign the specific user rights as you see fit. Maybe give them default rights or maybe only view only. Since this is my account and I trust myself, I'm going to click the All button. I can hit OK. 
Now I have a new user account listed there, empire back, backslash Eric G. And let's go ahead and hit save and exit. Now I don't necessarily have to close out of gauge pack and then reopen. Nice little trick if I just want to log in as someone else is just going up to file at the top. We can come down and click on switch user. So we're back at that same login window. It's telling me I'm again logging back into that sample gauges 130. Perfect. And this time, if I do check the box to log in with my user, or excuse me, my Windows username, it's still listing Empire and backslash Eric G. This time, though, if I click OK, I'm now logged in as that kind of Windows account. You can even see at the very bottom of my GagePack screen, it's telling me logged in as Eric G. So that's how you can leverage your Windows Active Directory account. You can list that inside of GagePack. And that way, when I'm logged into the computer, I can very easily launch and get into GagePack. That also means if you're maybe in the IT realm, you can go ahead and set up additional users. We just go back to users. All I have to do is potentially just copy and I could change the name to some of my other colleagues that I know have Active Directory accounts. So now I know that Derek B, if he wanted to log into this computer and launch GagePack, he could also use this same option. I can remove some of his rights to make sure that he doesn't do anything crazy, but that's perfect. That's what we want. An easy, seamless way to be able to log into GagePack without too much fuss. So with that, I hope you enjoy this new feature. Thank you.